Welcome back! Today we are going to use the Spectra app to do ICM photography on the iPhone. So this is a free app I use. Basically one of the first things I do is go up to the top and I turn this auto light indicator off because it defaults to auto. This usually does trippy things with the light that I don't normally like the effect, which is why I turn it off. And at the bottom right is the shutter speed. I'll usually turn it to 9 because I can control the shutter by turning on and off the buttons. So you see, if you touch the start button, the timer will start, and if you touch it again, the timer will stop. Which gives me more control than waiting for the timer to end. That's about it. You can use your side buttons to turn on and off the shutter. When I press the side buttons, you'll see the timer goes on, but the downside is if you press the side button again, it will not stop the shutter timer. You will have to press the screen button to stop it, or wait for the timer to run out. That's all there is to this app. We're going to use this to start the shutter speed timer and then move the camera around to get the camera movement and see what we get. So let's go for a walk. First up is the tower. This is really hard to hold one handed for the video so I go out of frame a lot. But I just start the timer, shake the camera and see what I get. I will take a lot of photos this way and then pick the best one I want because each time you take a photo you get something different depending on how you shake the camera. You can shake it fast or slow sideways or twisted. And this is what I ended up going with. I also use Snapseed to edit the photos which I'll show an example of later in the video. This one I'll use the wide angle lens and I'm going to shake it side by side. So the fun of doing this is because it can be of anything, even a boring shadow. Usually what the app is used for is to smooth water. So you see the water in the screen capture on the right, and if you hold the phone still and take a photo, it will smooth the water. That's what this app is best used for, but we are using it for ICM photography, which is why I'm shaking the phone. You can also use this for a kind of double exposure. Start it and hold it for a sec, then bring it up and hold it, and now you have a double exposure effect. Granted, you could just use the double exposure feature in Snapseed, but this is fun too. This one is turning out to have that dreamy look to it. Here I'm just walking behind people and shaking the phone while walking because walking even adds more movement to the effect. This one I'll just go up and down since the flag has vertical lines. This is a cool scene with the super wide lens. I'm going to try to spin my phone with this one. You can see I'm using the left button to start the timer instead of using the button on the screen. Let's see if we can do anything with these squiggly lines. I'm using the telephoto lens on this one instead of the wide, so I need to twist the phone more carefully to get the effect I want. Here's some people coming, let's try to get them. And they are going way too fast, they basically disappear. That didn't work. Let's go with this yellow walk sign. Here's another super wide, looking straight up at the lights and twist. This could look cool with the light and the shadow in the background. I'm going to move this more slowly to keep more of the texture and get the shadows to pop more.
The light on this tree looks cool. Anything that gives contrast is what I look for, so even if you wouldn't normally take a photo of just a tree, it could still look cool with this. And here's an example of what the light option does. You can see how it blows out the highlights. And let's try doing something with the sunset. Okay, so now I'm going to stop reading this polished script and just wing this next part, which is to show you how I edit on the fly. The audio quality may sound different. Okay, I'm going to show you a little bit more of my workflow here after I take so many photos with ICM you end up having a bunch of photos to choose from. Basically what I do is I'll just go through the ones and then if I like any particular one, I'll select it as the one that I like. And then I'll go into Snapseed because Snapseed is free. And then I'll open, go to album, go to the favorites and then I can easily find the favorite that I have. I like the faded glow a lot. So I'll look at that first and see if I like it or not to start out with. Um, so we'll just say yes, we'll start out with that one. And then sometimes I'll go into the vintage part and I'll play around with the vintage. Or um, I also use a lot of Glamour Glow um, and play around with the different glowing effects on that one. So let's say that one looks pretty good. And then sometimes I'll go into this Retro Lux and kind of see what the random would choose. Um, this one I don't... Not gonna do on this one um, and then sometimes I'll go into the grunge to see kind of what the grunge looks like the grunge is kind of overkill on this one and then sometimes I'll go into um, the curves and kind of give it usually I stick with the soft contrast and then if I want to crop it I'll usually go to the crop tools mostly square and we'll say that and after that I hit the export, export new, and then it exports the entire thing. Okay, here's another example of using people. So here you see I'm just going to go and look through each one to see what kind of person I, I want to do. And let's say I want to do this one. So I've already uh, gave it a heart. And then I'll come over to Snapseed and open the recent, or uh, I'm sorry, the favorite go to it, pulls it up. First, let's go ahead and crop it because I already know that I'm going to want to just get a little bit of it. All right, so try this faded glow effect. Looks good. Pull up the saturation a little bit. And go into Vintage, save that, but we will bring down the vignette. And then we'll bring up the brightness, like that, and then let's play with the glow. I'll go with this one. I like this the way it is. And there it is. Just export it. So the tree one, I'm going to go down here to this tree. And I've already favorited it. So I'll go over to Snapseed. Do the open. Okay. And I'm going to show you this tool too. Sometimes I use the um, healing, which is right here. And... You can just zoom in like this and then use this to move around and a lot of times using this spectra app it doesn't do the edges too well so i'll use the healing brush for the edges so you can see like these edges here just kind of get rid of that a little bit um type of thing if i want to keep the edges and you don't have to be too perfect because the image is not that perfect to begin with um and so you can kind of 
clean up the image like that if you wanted to. And then you can always do the last edit to see what the last one looked like. And, uh, you know, go with that. That looks pretty good, actually. And then if you just tap on it, you can see the original and the, the edit. Yeah, that looks good for me. And then let's go into the crop tool. And let's crop it like that. There we go. And then export it, and then there's that image. All right, well, that is what I sound like when I don't stick to a script. I fumble over my words a lot. But I hope it helped for you to see how I go through my photos. So here's the top 10 photos to vote on. I would say my favorite is this one. So which photo do you like most? Vote by leaving a comment below. Thanks for watching.